Good afternoon foodies, our second day in Malacca and it's a beautifully sunny and bright day today the wind is blowing on my okay now my I'm lying it's really hot the sun is literally melting my face off and I'm about to turn into a lobster anyway we are going to continue our Nyonya food hunt today and we're starting the day off with brunch at a place called Baba Chali that is very well known for their Nyonya kueh which are snacks or we call sweets by the Pranakan that we locals generally have for tea time and then we're going to follow it up with dinner at another place selling Peranakan cuisine called I think Amy's Nyonya Cuisine Baba Chali is a long established Nyonya restaurant specializing in Nyonya Kueh and they are located right at the end of two rows of old shop lots and it's really easy for you to recognize their building because it's yellow color right over there anyway let's not waste time and head in Sitting in the inside of the restaurant, it does give me some form of Nyonya vibes. I'm not too sure if it is mainly because of the windows because they are coloured in the shade of blue, yellow and green. And they've got a, a relatively simple sort of a setup. Paintings that are on the wall and they've got, I believe, a portrait of their ancestors as well. And on one side of the wall, they've got all their Pranakan dishes listed out that you could order. But we are here mainly for their very popular Nyonya Kueh. If you just look right behind me, that is their Nyonya Kueh stall. And you can see that there are just a myriad of different kueh that are on display. They come in different colours. Some of them are packaged individually. Some of them are packaged into like small assortment boxes where you could try everything in one small box. It's now around lunchtime and we are starving. So let's go grab some kueh. Okay, we have got our some of Nyonya kueh, and I quite like the fact that they have uh, like individually packed them in like plastic wraps because it makes it a lot more hygienic and I think in the current pandemic scenario, it's safer but it wouldn't look very nice on the plate so we are going to slowly undress them one by one okay. and try the kueh out So let's start with the first kueh, abu sago which is a two layers of sago sandwiching the coconut frost and sago is a type of starch hmm. And the top, the blue color actually is a top from the blue pink flower coloring. Yep. Hmm. Pretty good consistency. Yeah, a bit sticky, and you can still taste the individual sago pieces. Hmm. Mm. In fact, I think it sort of resembles something like a glutinous rice texture, but significantly firmer. So it's got a nicer chew. And you could taste the sweetness and the saltiness in the same time. I believe the sweetness is come from the sugar shell in the middle, and the saltiness is from the coconut frost surrounding the cold grain. Hmm. I think the sweetness from the middle might be gula melaka actually. There's a very mild caramel flavor from what you're supposed to get from gula melaka. I think it's got yeah, it's palm sugar, right? But it's not in a very robust, uh, potent amount. So you gotta really taste it, lah, to know it's palm sugar. Okay, next up, let's try this red color thing called ang ku kueh. Basically, ang means red in color. As you can see, the kueh is red in color. Uh, and ku, I think it's tortoise. And if you take a look at the shape, it actually looks like the shell of a tortoise, which is why it's called angku kueh. The surface is made of glutinous rice flour, and the middle filling is basically mung beans. Okay, um, I, I think it's really quite sticky. I think they didn't oil it enough on the surface. So, a little bit ugly. <laughs> but anyway, let us quickly try this out. Mm. It's decent, but pretty basic. The skin is pretty chewy. There's a nice saltiness on the skin. Mung bean paste is pretty well flavored though. Mm -hmm. It's got a nice uh, savory flavor, mm -hmm. along with a little bit of sweetness with it. And the mung bean paste actually is a bit dry. Which is why you will see that as you cut, it breaks into chunks instead of like, you know, being in a very pasty, pasty like praline type of texture. Mm. Alright, that's it for Angku Kueh. Let's move on to another kueh which is called the Kueh Talam. Mm. I'm very interested in this one because it's very special. It's very different from the normal Kueh Talam that we see. Yes. Generally Kueh Talam, what you get is um, a rice flour cake that 
up top is santan, which is coconut milk, and the bottom is generally pandan, pandan juice. yeah, pandan juice, which is green in color. But in their case, they use gula melaka instead. And I believe on the top, the dark blue is probably coloring from the blue pea flower, I'm gonna guess. Ooh, look at this, you can really tell that it is very bouncy. Anyway, let's try this out. Uh, it does feel quite rubbery, but let's not judge. Yeah. The white part, the coconut milk part is done very well. Soft, little bit of chill. Sort of melts in your mouth even. You got the saltiness from the coconut milk. Mm. Amazing. The bottom though. Yeah, sweetness from the coconut There's sweetness, but you can't really tell it's brown I'll be honest. And it's, it's, it's rubbery, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, it's, the texture is a bit firm to me. It's, yeah, it's firm and rubbery. Mm. It is, it's quite rubbery. I, I think you can tell uh, from the moment the, the fox tries to break the barrier. Anyway, next quick. This is my favorite on there on there. It's made from the glutinous rice flour. And the filling actually is palm sugar put with the coconut, coconut frost. frost. I noticed that I have put some sesame seed on seed top on of the on there on there. By the way, the green color is due to pandan coloring. Uh. They use pandan. Uh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's try this out. <gasps> oh! It burst in your... How is it? You could taste the color marker exposed in your mouth, but the skin is too thick. The sesame seed does bring some toastiness. Mm, yeah, the skin is way too thick, right? This is the most thick skin on the only I've ever had. I'm gonna be honest. Coconut floss is as usual, is good. They have good coconut floss. So it's just too thick. After the initial burst of their gula marker. Nothing. Yeah, you're left with nothing. Mm. Aside from the skin, I'm still chewing it. Anyway, on to the next kuih. This kuih wrapped in a banana leaf is called a kuih bong kong. It's basically a very soft textured rice flour cake doused with this gula melaka. And the blue color on the top is the coloring from the blue pea flower. Anyway, let's try this out. Oh my god, this is so soft. Anyway, let's go. Mm. Soft, chewy. You will taste coconut milk flavor, salty. The gula malaka is caramelly. Texture is soft with some form of chew. It's decent and this is what a kueh bong kong tastes like but I think the flavor balance will use a little bit more fine-tuning it feels very basic yep. last kueh of the day the kueh lapis uh, which is what we call a layer cake it's basically a rice flour cake that's made in the layers and it forms this nice uh, you know sort of bouncy kueh anyway let's try this out uh, this one does feel a little bit firm mm, it just smell very good though I don't know what is that smell the smell of kueh lapis is, is it probably rose the smell of rose, maybe rose fragrance. Let's try this. Right out again. It's chewy. Sticky. Sticky. Flavor is sweet. It's got a nice flavor. Mm -hmm. Actually, it tastes sweet. So after a while, it is quite sweet. Mm. It's quite sweet. Uh. Yeah. Um, so again, I would say decent kueh. Um, anyway, that's it for our final kueh at Baba Chiali. We're gonna finish it up. Uh, we're gonna go and do some sightseeing after this. So see you guys in a bit. As you walk up to A Famosa, you will notice that there are a row of these supposedly shops that sell souvenirs but I did notice that a lot of them are closed right now. I think it's mainly due to the pandemic and tourism hasn't fully recovered yet. So hopefully it recovers soon so that these guys can get back in business. Alright guys, if I'm not mistaken, this is what remains of the A Famosa. It used to be a fort and now what is left is only one of the gateways to the fort which they call the Santiago Port you can see right in front of the gateway are two I'll call them antique cannons I believe they are refurbished because they do look pretty nice and shiny if you take a look up top that is a hill it's called the St. Paul's Hill I think go up to the top and you'll get to the ruins of what used to be the church of St. Paul 
So a few facts on the Famosa. If I'm not mistaken, it was built in 1512 by the Portuguese after they have defeated the Malaccan Sultanate. And in order to prevent any counter-attack from the Malaccan Sultanate, they built this fort on a hill to serve as a defensive base. Subsequently, the fort itself was reinforced by the Dutch, but it was destroyed by the British. So this is what remains of, I would guess, once a great fort built by the Portuguese. Anyway, let us go past this uh, structure and head upwards to get to the ruins of the St. Paul Church. Alright, we have reached the top uh, of the St. Paul's Hill and this is the ruins of uh, what remains of the St. Paul Church. And I believe these are probably uh, some form of tombstones. There are also tombstones uh, at the back. And they even have this QR code, which I believe if you scan, you'll probably be able to read more information about them. Unfortunately, it has begun to drizzle and I believe we have to go now. We are probably heading back to the hotel, uh, take a quick rest and then we'll see you later for dinner. So, conclusion is do visit this place. I think it's a very nice spot, uh, very simple and quick to reach. Lots of things to see. Do come and visit the only gateway that remains for what was once a great fort, the Eifa Mosa, and as well as the, the ruins of St. Paul's Church. So, see you guys in a bit. Bye! Good evening guys, it's now dinner time and we are at Amy Heritage Nunya Cuisine. Actually, I would say that this is a very inconspicuous restaurant. It's just located right along this row of shops and aside from the signboard, you can't really tell mm. like it's a Nunya restaurant, right? Yeah. The setting is pretty simple, very straightforward. There are some portraits of her dishes hanging on the wall, some decorations like some porcelain, some teapots and such to give you a little bit of that Nunya flair. There's even a portrait of this a ring of porcelain spoons, which I think is a pretty neat touch. And as the name of the restaurant suggests, this kitchen is helmed by Chef Amy Ko. And this spot is actually a recommendation from one of our uh, Malaccan friends, uh, Miss Debbie, which is why we are here. So without further ado, let's take a look at the menu. I quite like the menu because in the first few pages, they do mention like the history of Baba's and Nunia's, um, the Nunia cuisine, and a few words from Amy, the founder, the chef. So we're gonna quickly go ahead and order uh, because the car is actually starting to pile in now and we want to quickly get dinner before there's too many people. <laughs> Alright guys, first dish is here and it's the Pai Ti or we call it Top Hats because if you look at this, it looks sort of like an inverted Top Hat. And Pai Ti is basically a crispy tart shell and inside it's filled with lots of hikama and on the top you have got a little bit of, I believe they are coriander, some chili pieces and small pieces of eggs. So let's quickly try this out because you've got to eat it quickly, if not the shell will turn soggy because the hikama has juice in it. Mm. 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 I love the flavour of the hikama we here. It's got a nice sweetness, it's succulent and juicy. And then at this table, you know, the shell isn't the thinnest that we've had, but it's crisp. Crispy, yeah, there's a crispy fragrance. Yeah, chili adds a lot more flavors onto mm. this spicy because it gives it tang. The yeah, acidity, a bit right? of acidity. Mm. The the spicy is a bit mild. Mm. Uh, it's not really like very spicy. So I think it's about just right. I would say it's a pretty decent piety. Mm. I would like it to be a little bit smaller though. I think it's quite big. Because generally, um, piety that we used to eat, you can eat it in one mouth, mm. So then you gotta bite it a few times. Mm. I try to take it back. It's not just a decent bite, it's a pretty good bite. Mm. If you try to grab like half of it in one bite, you add a little bit more of the chili. Please. Yeah, the chili is very essential mm. to this bite. Yeah. This is done really quite well. Mm. Okay guys, after the party, which I think is the appetizer, mm. all three of the dishes that we ordered are here and they are super aromatic. We've got over here Ayam buah keras and ikan gerang asam mm. and also Kangkong kobis keladat masak mm. titik lemak. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of uh, very saucy dishes mm. and, and the interesting also, thing, yeah. this is the, the rice. rice. So let's take a look at what's inside. Mm. 
Oh, that's a pretty interesting way of presenting the rice. Okay, let's quickly put some of it on our plate and start eating. Okay, rice right, done. Let's remove this huge basket over here. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, I'm interested to start with the ayam buah keras, which is called tendon nut chicken. It's like a rendang, it's a spicy chicken, but they do not use any coconut milk. They use candle nut to thicken the consistency of the sauce. Give it some sauce. Oh, this chicken is looking glorious. I love the drumstick. Oh, look at the steam. Oh, I'm super excited. Okay, Kren, are you ready? Yep. Let me get a bit of chicken with the rice. Oh, the chicken looks a bit firm. Tender. When you're poking, it feels a little firm but surprisingly tender with a little bit of bite to it. It's not mushy by any means. It's not like the super soft type. And I like the flavour, it's savoury with a sweetness. And then you could taste that the spices were used. It's like hiding behind the sweetness. It's pretty creamy. I could taste the lemon glass. I think they have put the lemon glass in the, I mean the spices. Mm, yeah, yeah. I think there is a lemon glass kind of like fragrance and mm. flavour. Yep. It's pretty addictive for me. Well paired with the white rice. Yeah, it pairs well with the white rice. It, it has depth. Lah. It's not rich but it has depth. Oh, this is very addictive. Okay, we're gonna move on to the next dish. Let's do the fish next. Ikan garang asam, which is basically a spicy tamarind fish dish. The fish in this case is the ikan jenaha, golden snapper. Onto the rice it goes. Put a little bit more sauce. Okay, let's break the fish. Oh, the fish feels tender. It's flicking. Look at this. You just break it apart and the white flesh reveals itself. Okay, I'm gonna put it with some rice. Okay, let's go. Oh, you could taste the tang mm. from the tamarind. Not yep. acidity. Mm. It doesn't punch you in the face. Yeah. It rolls in very delicately. Yeah. And the fish is tender. Mm. It's not the most flaky, but I think this is the texture of the fish itself. It's tender, it's soft. It's got a little bit of its own, I call it a fishy flavour. Oh. But I remember golden snapper, they, at least the golden snappers that I've tried here, they tend to have this flavour. Yeah. A little bit fishy. Yeah. But that sauce, it's impressive. Mm. That is a very good sauce. Not exactly very spicy. I mm. would say for us probably it's considered like on the milder side. Mm. But the sauce is really good. It goes ridiculously well with rice. Mm. You can easily finish one bowl of rice with this gravy. Yeah, exactly. Mm. My goodness, this is a very addictive gravy. Mm. Okay. I'm gonna move on to the, the vegetable. we have been sitting there for a while. Okay, this is the really long name vegetable. Uh, <laughs> It's basically kangkong, which is water spinach with some cabbages. Uh, you can see that there are some sweet potato, which is a bit like that. And it's cooked all in this uh, santan, which is coconut milk. And there are even prawns in there too. <laughs> you can smell the santan. Definitely use. It smells sweet even. Okay, let's go. Mm. Mm. Yeah. It's sweet, you taste the sundan. It's a little bit of mind screw because I don't know why. It reminds me of chendol. <laughs> a, a sweet, savory version of chendol using vegetables. Maybe it's because of the, the sundan that is used inside. Mm. And it's very creamy. Mm. Again, a very sauce heavy but very addictive dish to go with rice. And also a little bit spicy. Yes, that lah, basically. Mm. Mm. I love the sweet potato. How do we? This is a dinner. I love this. And we're going to finish this up and maybe order some dessert. Alright, guys, the dessert is here, and this is obviously chandel. Yeah. And I, I would say it's a pretty small bowl. Um, they put the shaved ice on top and you can see that it's doused with gula melaka, mm. palm sugar and you can see the green jelly chandol on the sides and underneath is obviously the santan which is coconut milk so let's quickly try this out mm. Mm. Oh. Gula melaka, really robust you can taste the caramel, smoky flavour that is uh, the character of gula melaka 
Right, the main thing is the, the smoky flavor. I think the chendol uh, is quite nice, it's very smooth, soft. Whereas the sago, it does add a little bit more of that nice round bitey texture to it. But personally, I think the gulam malacca probably a little bit too heavy handed, like too generous with the gulam malacca. The smokiness is very, very potent and the sweetness is very strong. So it overpowers all the sandang flavor. You get a search for the sandang flavor, I would say it's a little bit imbalanced, but other than that, it's, it's all right. Yeah. Mm. Okay, guys, let's talk about the first spot, the Nyonya Kui spot, Baba Chali. Okay, I would say for the price, uh, because it's about 120 to 150 per kui, the kui is serviceable. La. That said, there are quite a bit of flaws in the kui. They do taste pretty commercial. They tasted almost like any Nyonya shop, or even the, the shopping center chain Nyonya shops is roughly in that range. So, if it is your first time trying Nyonya Kueh. For the price, I think it's, it's alright and serviceable. You, you can drop back and try them out since you're in Malacca anyway. But if you are a Nyonya Kueh lover, mm -hmm. I think you can save your stomach space for elsewhere. La. This might not be your choice. It's definitely not going to be your choice. Trust me on this one. Yeah. yeah. We also happened to try their chendol earlier. Pass also. <laughs> okay, I feel so bad saying this. But anyway, um, before this being said, I am sorry to say that Baba Chali scores a zero plate on the gourmet plate. Mm. Um, it's still serviceable, don't get me wrong, it's not like bad or anything. It's just, you know, normal. Okay, mm. moving on to the next spot which I'm more excited about. Amy's Heritage Nyonya Cuisine. Yeah, this spot. I would say it came with a slow start, right? Mm. I think the pie tea, it took a while but it grew on us. The pie tea was done pretty well. But the dishes are what really sort of got to us like, in a way. It feels like a roller coaster starting slow. Yeah, you start slow and then uh, the dishes come, it's still sort of slow. You're still sort of in the, the ascending up to the hill. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, as you taste mouth after mouth of the sauce and all the ingredients, it starts rolling. And you're like, oh my goodness, this is so addictive. Yeah. And we ended up eating so much rice. Mm. The key point of these dishes is uh, the freshness of the ingredients and the sauce is what really blows us away. Yeah, there's a dab and yeah, you taste that. the spices. Yeah. Yeah. But bear in mind, uh, it doesn't blow you away on first bite. It's not that type of dish. It grows on you over time. It's sort of like that childhood friend that you always see as your best friend but never really had any interest in her. And over the years, you slowly fall for her. Mm. That is the feeling you get in this place. Yeah, so okay. I would say really good and I really want to thank Miss Debbie for introducing this to mm. us. Yeah, really enjoyed it. And with that being said, uh, Imi Heritage Nyonya Cuisine scores a half a plate nice. on the gourmet plate. Which means it is some high quality culinary right there. Absolutely recommended. And I really enjoyed this. Mm. Uh, when I come back to Malacca, I will definitely want to drop out and try their other dishes. So that's it for our second day in Malacca. Mm. We are going to try a few foods that are very popular and well known in Malacca like every tourist must go. So stay tuned. See you next week. Bye.